everybody. This is Tina Allen. I am the owner of Strategic Solutions, and we do local government and nonprofit processes of inclusion. Um, and so that kind of leads me um, to this kind of work today, where we want to help you know how to go to a, um, a local government meeting, make public comment, and talk to staff and do whatever you need to do to be a really good housing advocate here in Northwest Michigan. Um, I've worked on the Grand Vision, if you've heard of that, and Focus of Our Future, Grand Traverse County Master Plan, um, and then with homelessness issues with the Northwest Michigan Coalition to End Homelessness, and I teach um, some classes, including team building at Grand Valley here in Traverse City. So I have this kind of unique background. I hope it will help you. So we're going to kind of call this 101. So this is the basics. I'm not an expert. Um, so I'll give you the basics of what it takes to um, make good public comment. So um, what are we going to talk about? We're going to talk about who makes land use decisions. What are the decisions they make? How do they make them? And how can you be an advocate to do that before something's changed? And then how do we advocate once a decision has been made or there's something about a specific project you wanna be part of? So we'll just kind of go over those briefly, but give you a good background. So I wanna tell you that some of the things that I have in here and some of the things I'm gonna say can actually be found in great detail. If you just Google new designs for growth, it's something that was done way back in the 90s, but believe it or not, the processes of local government have not dramatically changed since then. So they have some, it's just that website has some really good outlines that might help you understand this a little bit more fully when I'm done, if you're interested in doing that. So first we'll talk about who makes the decision. Now, right now you don't even know what the decisions are, but let's get in line for who makes them. So um, anything that's involving land use can go to a lot of different levels. Now, some of your counties will be a little bit different and it will be slightly different if you're in a township, a city or a village. But when you look at um, the what is the body that makes the decision, right? So it is the county commission, the township board, the city councilor commission, the village council. And then you've got your elected officials. So those are the people you actually vote for and, um, and know that you know who they are and you know that they're responsible for decisions made at the local level, but you'll find that not all of them are their responsibility. And then, who do they appoint? So those elected officials appoint people to your planning commissions, your zoning board of appeals, which you'll hear about later. But those are not elected positions. Those are appointed positions by your elected officials. So what is a planning commission? So um, the planning commissions basically makes, is basically there to make the um, overarching uh, land use decisions. So we're going to learn more about what some of these are, but they're going to be the ones who develop and maintain the master land use plan. They're going to make recommendations on approval of the plan. Sometimes they are the only ones who adopt it. You never get an elected official involved. In other areas, it will go from your planning commission as a recommendation to your city commission or township board or whatever, village council, and they'll make the final one. But the planning commission is where the work, primary work is done to develop these things. Um, they'll also sometimes develop upon direction from your governing body, so your elected governing body, capital improvement plans or recreation plans or any other kind of community plan. So they are the planning commission. They're the ones who actually develop the zoning ordinance. So they're the ones who write the rules, um, and we'll get to that a little bit later too. And then they also make recommendations how to change that zoning ordinance, again, in some places, your township board or city commission or village um, council may make the final approval of that zoning ordinance, but in a lot of places, the planning commission, the appointed people are the last ones to do it. And then they also review things like, well, you have me zoned like this, I want to be different. Or if there's a commercial uh, or a 
housing development coming in, they actually are the ones who look at the site land, site plans and um, make sure that they meet the zoning ordinance or um, they have questions that can be answered. They're the ones, this is where the work is done at your planning commission meetings. And then um, they sometimes are involved in reviewing the community's property purchase and development projects. Then you've heard of the Zoning Board of Appeals. So ZBA, BZA, everything's a little bit different. So now we're gonna tell you that you do have a zoning ordinance. So again, I'll talk about more later, but that's law. It is when something, someone wants to do something that isn't exactly allowed in the zoning ordinance, but it's pretty close, um, then they have to go between the zone, before the Zoning Board of Appeals who says, yes, we can grant a variance to the regulations, or no, we can't. Um, and so it also, if people say, well, we think that the zone, that the, or the planning commission says that the zoning ordinance means this, but when we read it, we think it means this, then zoning board of appeals would be the ones who get in the way to kind of help define those things. So again, they do not make law, they can have um, grant variances to the law and they can interpret the language of that law. Planning Commission makes the law. Then you have your land use staff. Now, if you're in a really small area, you're actually probably not going to have much staff at all, but typically it, 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 there's a zoning administrator and then you either have, a, have staff planner or planners or in a lot of the smaller areas, again, they will contract with somebody to be a staff planner, but they're actually there to be the ones who meet with people on a daily basis, right? The Planning Commission and Zoning Board of Appeals typically meet once to twice a month. And if you wanna ask them questions, you have to wait for that meeting to happen. So this is where you can come in, you can talk to staff people about it. Um, but staff has no authority to make changes to the plan or the zoning ordinance. So if you hear them say, oh, we're going to change that, make sure they mean that's already being discussed and, and uh, that the planning commission is ready to make that, mo that move. Because if not, the staff isn't allowed to do that. But they play a very important role in local decision making because they are usually people who are educated or have experience in that work and um, the planning commission and zoning board of appeals quite often turn to them for for um, questions and support um then we can also oh then we have the city commission the village council township boards where are they in land in land use decisions um so there are certain they will quite often be the ones who adopt the master land use plan, adopt the zoning ordinance, and look at the, um, also adopt the zoning districts and map changes. Again, not always, but quite often that's like where the buck stops. Um, they also are the ones who appoint the planning commissioners and zoning board of appeals members. They hire the planning and zoning staff that, that you can talk to. And then they also do um, general law ordinances, we'll talk about that a little bit later, that may impact land use, and um, they are in charge of doing any moratoria that need to happen. So that happens. So they're um, not that kind of day-to-day uh, -day people, that's staff. They're not the ones who meet necessarily every month about land use things, but quite often there are land use decisions that are have to be made that only they can make. And then there's always ad hoc commission committees. So your planning commission during that master planning process that we'll talk about, they may say, oh, we need some people to work just on this thing, like a village concept. Or um, in my community, we had one for shoreline protection. So there can be um, smaller committees of the planning commission that do the work too. Um, and then of course the city and township, they can do that um, for any major decisions. And But remember in all of those cases, the committees are not the ones who make the final decisions. It's still going to, they will be making recommendations to the next level of decision makers. So now what are the decisions they make? I told you who makes them primarily planning commission, 
um, than zoning board of appeals and certainly the elected officials. Um, but what are the decisions when I say land use decisions, what am I even talking about? So um, these are some of the things I pulled out that we'll talk a little bit more about, but things that um, may be important to building like affordable housing or any kind of homes, right? What is the lot size? So a larger lot sizes that if they're required mean that there's going to have more cost per home. Um, what is the home size? So if we're talking about affordable housing, if you live in a community where their minimum square footage is 900 square feet, it's really hard to make one bedroom apartments or small homes. And then how many homes can be on a lot? So we talk a lot about single family homes. Um, well, then that may be can we build something that's a pseudo apartment for a mother-in-law, right? What are the rules around that? And then who can live in a home? Um, there's, when we say single family, there are some very different um, descriptions of what a single family, what a family is. And in some places, you still have to be married. Um, so that, and, and you can't have roommates. So those are things that can really impact affordable housing. And then we talk a lot now about short-term rentals and that's, are we gonna have them at all? If we do, do we limit how many and who are they available to? So those are all the types of decisions that they make that really impact overall land use. So the first piece in making land use decisions really is your master plan, last or land use plan, comprehensive plan, they're all, talked about a little bit differently or called something differently, but it is the guide that helps shape land use decisions. So um, as I note there, it uh, that how a community is zoned is in the is decided in the master plan process. And then the zoning ordinance um, is written based on what that is. So that master plan, think about planning. That's what we expect to do in the future. This is what you want your community to look like. And those zoning ordinances may or may not match that. So let's say something like lot size. If you have all one acre zoning, but you wanna be able to have um, multifamily housing, and it's all one acre single family, then you wouldn't be able to do that. So it will limit or expand the ability for the community to have um, different levels of um, housing, different sizes, different rentals by, you know, for purchase, that kind of thing. Um, and then the goals and objectives of a master plan include recommendations for future development. And that's shown on a future land use plan. And then the plan also has to include a zoning plan. In other words, how do we want this to look? What do we want it to be? So if you want to be involved and hear the most discussion about what's going on or what how your planning commission in particular is picturing your community, you wanna attend planning commission meetings and you wanna attend them when they're talking about the master plan. So we quite often complain later and say, well, this zoning ordinance, why do we have this in here? Well, you need to be involved in this master plan process. So watch for that. Make sure you're there to hear how, how um, your community is being designed to be in the future. And this talks about what the process is. So like, when, when would you be involved? And you can see they have a notice of intent, there's public input, they send a draft to the legislature. They, they, there's public input all along the way. But I would say the biggest part is, is when the planning commission is, they put out a lot of notices. You get it sometimes on cards or in newsletters. Be part of our master planning process. That's where they're talking about every little thing. So that's the part to be involved in. But there's a lot of places along the way to make public comment. So pay attention to that process as it happens. Typically, a master plan is supposed to be redone every five years. Um, so you should be, that's why it's important to get in there when they're talking about it, because it's five years before they do it again. 
Then we talked about how zoning ordinance is the local law. Um, that's regulating the sizes and it is to protect the health, safety and general welfare of all citizens. So remember when they're making a zoning ordinance, it's not just willy nilly, it's because they, they are looking at everything. They're not looking at one particular project, right? They're looking at how that might impact the entire community. And that zoning ordinance is going to have a lot of text and it's going to have a zoning map and it will divide um, the top, whatever your jurisdiction is into different districts, districts or zones. And that's why it's called a zoning map. Um, and then this just talks a little bit about um, that there are legal boundaries for each district that each district will regulate things like the use, the size, um, the features that they have to have. Like it can literally say any new development, you have to have three trees in the front yard. Those things can be in there. They're usually based on what types are, are allowed in each district. So there's residential, commercial, agricultural, recreation. But like within residential, there may be two or three. There's high density where you'd have be able to have apartments. There's low density where there's going to be bigger lots. So there will be each of these districts may have several districts within sub districts, I guess I'll call them. And then there's another way of doing it where it's called use based zoning. It's usually more in uh, villages and cities, um, but it talks about even if it's uh, like in industry is going to be different than commercial, right? So it's that kind of a thing. And then they can also be um, around building or architectural types. So that's where you're looking at things like um, we want everything here to look older because this is the old part of town. This part of town, we want to look um, a little bit more modern, right? So, and all those things can be involved in that zoning um, ordinance. So a little bit more, every zoning ordinance includes regulations like this, which is that use. So um, you can have things that are by right, and then you can have things that are either, are on, under something that's called a special land use or a planned unit, um, planned use development, sorry. Um, and by right means, if you do exactly what we tell you to do in the zoning ordinance, you get to do it. We're going to approve it. And then there's other things where they go, eh, we want to be able to ask you more questions. We want to be able to talk to you about it. Um, and so that would be um, a special land use and includes, it will include your ability to make public comment. If something is a by right, then if they do it, they're going to, it's going to be approved. So you really don't have a lot of input into that. You would have had input into it during the master planning process, but not at this point. So there are those different, so somebody might go, this is a use by right, we have to approve it. That's what they're talking about. Then there's always dimensional regulations. Um, you can see here what those would be. Setbacks, that's how far away you have to be from the property next to you, in front of you, in back of you, the road. And then the density regulation is how, um, how many homes per acre, how many properties per acre can you have? Um, so they have those general development standards that um, talk more about that. So now we talked about a general law ordinance. So um, there are times when it works better to have something in a general law ordinance, or it may just be that um, things like noise quite often would be a general law ordinance instead of in the zoning um, ordinance. Um, so at anything that is that the township or city or village wants to have as a general health and safety and welfare that goes under here. And those decisions, again, are made by that legislative body, not by the Planning Commission or Zoning Board of Appeals. It's at a different level. And a moratorium is the same type of thing. So um, sometimes when there's something that wasn't expected, something new and different that comes up, um, 
then there can what quite be a more sometimes be a moratorium. So I remember way back in the nineties, um, sexually oriented businesses, someone opened a a business in our Northwest area. And all of a sudden everybody said, oh my gosh, we never put anything about sexually oriented businesses in our zoning zoning district. Now everybody's gonna try to put them here. So we need to have a moratorium until the planning commission has time to develop a sexually oriented business um, portion of that zoning ordinance. So that is something that would, if that's something that your community needs, um, then that happens by the elected officials and the legislature or the legislating body, but quite often it can be recommended through the planning commission. So then how do we do it? Now that we've said who's doing it, we've said uh, what they're making decisions about. Now let's talk a little bit about the process. So for you to become involved, all of your uh, local governments have, um, websites and there will be agendas and calendars for all of the meetings. They'll have planning commission zoning. So you'll actually f get the exact agenda on there. And quite often it's the whole packet that the people who are attending will also get. So you'll get the site copies of the site plans they might be reviewing. You'll get any new zoning ordinance changes, all the language for that. So you may have to look around a little bit, but they will be there. So when you decide um, there's an issue maybe you're, that's important to you, any of these um, meetings could be the ones who are talking about that. So you have to look at the agenda and make sure. So when they meet, every time they meet, all these levels, unless it's a um, some kind of a workshop for the master planning, um, they will follow the strictly follow Robert's rules of or order. And if you're not used to that, it can seem very formal. Um, they don't really talk to each other the same way and they have to make a motion and somebody seconds the motion and then you have discussion and um, they can't change the motion. So then they might take it back and have somebody else do it. So it can be really um, different for people who aren't used to it, but it's to keep everything running smoothly. But one of the important things about that is when they do have some public comment, we'll talk a little bit more about that. Um, you'll want to make sure you direct your comments to the chair. You don't see your friend or some guy you know who voted no last time and start asking him questions and directing things to him. Everything will be directed to the chair. So remember that. Um, they are going to have to follow the Open Meetings Act, which means every discussion any of them have um, where there's more than two decision maker makers present has to be at a public meeting. So when you think that they're all in a smoke filled room talking about things, that doesn't happen anymore. Um, they are not allowed to talk about things where decisions are going to be made without either having a full quorum. So they may go visit a site, but somebody is there to call the meeting, make sure it's a formal meeting, make sure there's people taking minutes. That it just doesn't happen without that anymore. And then um, if you wanna make public comment again, you're going to have to wait for your turn on the agenda. So it will say on the agenda, this is public comment. That's when you can talk. Now we'll go a little bit more into that. So agendas are going to include things like this for the planning commission. They may have discussion and updates of the master plan. They may be talking, doing the same thing for the zoning ordinance and map. They will review specific ordinances that happen to come up. They'll review what is a use, they'll, so there may be projects that come to the planning commission and some of those are going to be used by right and you will not see anything there specifically for public comment on that. And they, but they may have special land uses or planned uses developments and those are going to have specific places for public comment. So there will always be a spot for public comment um, and it might be generally and it might be within the project. So pay attention to that so you know when to do it. So, um, 
again, it says open meetings X requires that there's public comment at, at open meetings. So some of them will put them one at the beginning, one at the end. Um, and sometimes there's only one other than specific things. But the most important thing that note to self is the words are public comment, not public discussion. You will want to have a discussion. You will want to get up there and say, blah, 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 blah. And what do you think about this? And no one will answer you. Don't think that it that, that isn't a place for discussion. So you're not going to hear them talk back and forth with you. It's possible sometimes someone will say, I would like to ask you a question. And if they do, then you can have a little bit more discussion. But if that's not the case, then you just say what you're going to say and be done. Um, there are also rules. Normally, they will, it will be limited to three minutes. And someone is probably going to be timing you. Not always, but some most of the time. And so you should really plan what the comment is you wanted to make ahead of time as much as possible, right? So you can use your three minutes the most wisely. You want to, might want to keep in mind that sometimes these meetings go for three and four hours and planning commissioners really like it when you get to the point and, and township boards and city commission, everybody does get to the point, say what you need to say. Don't say a bunch of stuff you don't need to say because they're going to be really tired by the end of the meeting and they know that. So um, be really respectful of that. Um, again, I said that public there's so there's always public comment, but there also if there's anything that requires a public hearing um, that will have it during that agenda item, as will um, several other things. So pay attention when you look at the agenda. If you're worried about a particular housing project, look and see if there's an additional public comment at the point of that housing project. If there is, wait and comment then. If there is not, you need to say it at the beginning of the meeting during the general public comment or because you're not going to get another chance. So make sure that you um, pay attention to that as well. Where are the spots for public comment? And then be respectful about what you're saying. So now that we know all those things, how you can do this, what are we looking for in Housing North? And basically we're looking for you to pay attention to what Housing North is working on and then look at all these things, monitor the agendas, attend the meetings, be part of the master land use plan, introduce yourself and say, hey, I'm also here for Housing North. So if you have any questions, let me know. And then take messages back. So if you find out that they're working on a master plan and that's a new thing, let Housing North know um, because then they can kind of track that kind of thing. We, there are not enough people, there's not enough staff at Housing North to be at these local meetings. No one could. There's hundreds of meetings um, in our 10 counties. So we need you to be the eyes and ears and voices of any initiatives that are coming through your local planning commission's and zoning boards of appeal and um, uh, township boards and city commissions and village councils so that Housing North can be there if there's an issue. So we'd really like you to let us know. Um, same thing, I'm just saying, <laughs> monitor these meetings, right? Um, for Housing North, um, we want, again, we want you to learn about it and kind of be the back and forth communicators with us. Now I'm going to give you a little example um, of a place where it got a little off, and um, but just kind of to see you how this reality is in these meetings. So I haven't been to Al well, I have been to Allegan Township, but I don't know this township. But this was a really good example of how things went different ways, right? And how different groups had discussions about this. So. The, the um, subject of short-term rentals obviously came up in their community. And so if you look here, this talks about 
changes to the zoning ordinance, right? And over here it says, here's changes to the zoning ordinance that have to do with short-term rentals. So that was again, where it hopefully had been included in their master plan when they had those big discussions. They said, you know, we wanna do something to address the issues of short-term rentals. I assume they wanted to limit them in some way. Um, and so that then went to the planning commission. They talked about it. They came up with some zoning ordinance um, language. And here's the quick example of how that's in their zoning ordinance. These are different pages, but the first one you see there is their definition. What do they, how are they defining when they use the words short-term rental? What do they mean by that? That's the definition. You will always find definitions for everything in your zoning ordinance. And then down here in section seven under general provisions, they said rental of single family dwellings. And then they said, all of these will be subject to these regulations and performance standards. So I didn't put them all in there, but it's things like lighting. It's things like noise. It's things like how many people can stay there. Like, how do you decide how many can be there? It talks about whether or not people have to get a permit to do it. So all those things are included in that um, zoning ordinance. So when you have an issue that you're concerned about, and, and let's say it's something about the size of a home, and it says, um, you know, this is a single family home, then you're going to say, well, what is your definition of a single family home? So you have to go back to the definitions to make sure that it's what you think a single family home is, right? So in this case now, they did they had their zoning ordinance and they had their regulations in there. And then the state of Michigan legislature came in and um, put forth a bill that has not yet, has not been approved, but it was a good example where it says they're going to amend the Michigan act that allows for zoning. Um, and establish that short-term rentals are used as a residential use that's allowed in every zoning district and not to be considered a commercial use because that's what a lot of communities did, right? They said, well, renting your home is a commercial use, so you can't do it in a, this residential zoning district. And that's how they, they um, made those regulations. Um, but, the state came and said, well, this bill would, would um, prohibit that, but you could still make some rules about noise and advertising and traffic and things like that. Well, so what did Casco Township do? They pulled the short-term ordinance or the short-term limitations out of the zoning ordinance because that law only talked about zoning ordinance and they adopted it a little bit differently as a general law ordinance. There are also some big differences between zoning ordinances and general law, which is uh, in a zoning ordinance, if you someone has done something for many, many years in their home, um, it's called a non-conforming use, and um, they can continue to do that. But if someone came in and wanted to start doing that, they couldn't do it as a new thing. That's called grandfathered in. But with um, a general law ordinance, things aren't grandfathered unless it's stipulated in there. That becomes an ordinance, whatever date they say it's going to take place. So, um, that, so that's what that is. But that's how that community handled something. And they could have actually, going back to that, they could have actually done a moratorium in between, right? And said, oh, no, we're worried about this now. If we're not going to be, our zoning ordinance isn't going to be okay. We're going to take six months to develop this new general law ordinance um, in between. So that's where those different groups, different um, committees and commissions can do work that um, works with each other, but are independent of each other. So we're just going to say, how do we do this, right? How do you get to do this? So go in, make some general um, concern and public comment. You've got an issue that you're worried about, right? Go into the planning commission or whichever meeting you need to go to and make the public comment and say, I am concerned about this and this is why. You're going to make it short and sweet and to the point. And then with that, go in and talk to whoever it is that would 
is in the staff area that can help you with that, right? You talk to the planning um, department, if that's who it is, but sometimes in small townships, it might be the supervisor and they can help you get it on the agenda through the chair, right? So talk to whoever it is in the office that you can. Then pay attention and ask if, if you really think it's important, see if you can talk them into getting it as a discussion on an agenda and they'll tell you which one. Um, then you start watching the agendas, are people talking about it? And then you come back when it is and make targeted public comment. And when you do that, invite other key stakeholders to join. So now you're not on your own. And then watch the agendas to see if decisions are coming up because they could be talking about this for six months. So you want to make sure that you're there when that decision is made. And then, as I said, repeat and don't give up if there's something that you think is really important. And then the last thing is really important, um, publicly and privately thank those in, uh, responsible. So going once you've made the planning commission, work harder, look into some things they didn't wanna look into, um, that, that we're not, they had so much other work to do and you're bringing something else to the forefront. Make sure you go back to that meeting and say, thank you for discussing it. Even if it didn't turn out the way you wanted it to, thank you for discussing it. Thank you for making it a priority. Really appreciate that. So that's really the end of what I have. Um, I mean, these the people who are on these commissions are just people who live in your commission com community. They aren't trying to make money off this either publicly, I mean, for the, the local jurisdiction or for themselves. And they make very, very little, a sti very small stipend. They do a lot of work. They take a lot of guff as my dad call it. So make sure that you treat them with respect but, and get your um, messages down and make sure you talk to those right people. And I think you can make a real difference. If for any reason you'd like to get in touch with me, you can see my um, email address there and I'm happy to talk to you anytime. So thank you very much. Take care. Bye-bye.